So starting now, these vampire videos will get longer because Blood Captain jumps significantly in length from the previous one. It is the longest of them all, I believe. Except for maybe the last one. Anyway, this is quite a long bit. So we are spending so, start out. Connor is back on. No, the guy up. Still loyal to Maleko. And they are joining up on their uh, not kennels for the day. When Maleko's brother shows up, Barbaro. Oh, I also forgot to mention the stuff that I Connor gives a message to the captain saying that they can destroy the pirates with fire. And after the murder of one of Malaka's other brothers, Porphyrio, they decided they're going to attack the ship and destroy it instead of letting it be in vampire hands, so they set the ship on fire, which kills a lot of them, but does not kill Sidorio and Jazz, who has become Sidorio's deputy. So that was at the end of the last book. I'm sorry, I forgot that. But anyway, so after the death of Porphyrio, Barbaro is, decides that they need to stick together as brothers. And so they decide to do this. They're going to go on a mission to steal some treasure together. And this time it will be on land, which is very rare for the pirates to do. Cut last Kate comes up with a plan. And they are going to pretend to be movers, ship movers, and on the way, they're just going to leave and the horse and steal the stuff. So they do this, and Connor is prepared up to help protect um, Barbara's cocky, annoying son, Moonshine. Hate Moonshine until the last book. But anyway, Moonshine is a brat and a jerk and basically evil and he's a little kid about Connor's Con and Moonshine being stupid gets the whole team caught so they have to get away quickly and Connor ends up having to kill someone for the very first time and of course this devastates him and then he hides out in his cabin for a while. And when he wakes up, he finds the statue of a called a blood captain, which is a pirate tradition when a young pirate's first kill. And this was not done by Malako, but she believes at first, but on Barbara. By Barbara. But Connor is beginning to realize that this path of piracy may not be the best way, so he decides he's going to go talk to Maleko and him, he's going to see if he will break the articles that he has signed. And, but Maleko is extremely angry at this and completely burns the articles and sends him away from the ship forever to never return. So Connor leaves and he's trying to he decides he needs to go to the place. The place is a sanctuary. They are climbing a mountain, a sanctuary, which is a very big mountain. And it's hard to get up and it is the middle of snowing. But they eventually make it and are helped the rest of the way by OWA, who is the one of the one of the people in charge of sanctuary, like the second in command. And so she, they get up there, get to the sanctuary, and after passing through the several corridors, um, they meet up with Masu. Who is the vampire guru? Um, and here is where vampires control their ghosts, their blood, by drinking a 
T that is a blood substitute and my other ways, many ways. Eventually I'll pay with a donor and sent to the donor. And so Grace is more interested in the personal healings. She finds this corridor called the Corridor of Ribbons, and she finds one ribbon in particular of a young man named Johnny Desperado. He, Johnny Desperado, was a young Mexican boy. He grew up in Mexico, and when his family was killed, he went on a cattle, he went with a cattle, cattle ring. They steal cows and stuff. And one of the days, they were caught and they were all hanged, including Johnny, despite him being so young and innocent. And the so, off the awkward, she meets the real Johnny. And they end up kind of starting a friendship slash romance. Which Grace kind of feels guilty about because she also likes to work. So, one day, or after a few weeks, um, <laughs> Connor, Miranda, also. Jazz appears at the night before he leaves. Jazz appears and asks Carl and his friend Bart, one of the other friends that Bart might that um that um Connor has to take him to a blood tavern to get some blood. So they arrive there and he decides Jazz decides he doesn't want to be like Sidorio anymore, he wants to go on to the Nocturne, so he travels to Sanctuary. So, anyway, so Jazz has arrived at Sanctuary. He strikes up a relationship with Darcy, who came with him to the So they kind of strike a friendship. And so, when Sonorio comes, Sonorio one minute comes and persuades many men pirates to follow him and go to take over the world with him. And Jez goes with him just to invite Darcy, and, but she is very firm in her loyalty to the vampire captain and declines. And Johnny, after struggling with himself for a while, leaves with Sidorio as well. And Grace and Darcy are both very distraught by this, but they don't have much time to think about it because the vampire crew, Mashu, has asked Darcy to return to the vampire ship. So soon she returns with the captain and he is in very critical condition. So they don't know what's going on, but Grace and Darcy and Morgan have healed my poultices and bandages and other ways are asked to help with this process. They are, but they are one person short, and so Grace is very surprised when she finds Connor, who has come to help them. He, they don't, she doesn't know why he's there at first, but she knows he is there. And so they rescue the captain, and he is stabilized because he has had many distressed souls encased within his own body to protect them from death. But now it is time for them to move on, so they are starting his body until they are most kind of ghostly humanish until they are. And the very last ghost to emerge is Sally Tempest, the twins' mother.
of the silly. Once they are done, kind of race, kind of catch each other up on what's happening. And they are waiting for news on Sally and Sidorio and Jez and John. And Sidorio and Jez who are now joint deputies with him. Have, are stealing a prison barge called the Blood Captain. A prison barge which they rename the Blood Captain. Transform or kill all of the prisoners. So this, this is a good book. It was my second least favorite of the series, but it's still good and I still enjoy it. I, I haven't read it in a while until recently, but it's, I still think it's great. And I recommend it to you when you read these series. If you like them, if you like vampires and pirates, you very much enjoy this book. And so, yeah. I think that this series, this is where the series kind of starts to change a little bit and become a little more come from more young adult to mid upper high school or middle school so it starts out kind of for like lower upper like fifth grade i'd say to like seventh or eighth maybe eighth grade and now it's definitely why like, you know whichever you want to out this stuff in your historical fiction. Oh, let's mention this world. There has been a great flood, so a lot of old land masses are underwater. I forgot to mention that, and this is actually, this is actually in the future, the 25th countries. So, yeah, there's that, there's that is. So, there we go. That's what, this is what our world will look like in the 25th countries, ruled by pirates and vampires. But anyway, as I usually say, this is a great book, full stars, full whatever you want to say about it. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it, it's just a great book. And I hope you all will read them, these series, and enjoy it like I do. Have a great day, and enjoy Blood Captain, and look forward to the next book in the series, The Black Heart. And that will be a lot more, a lot more things going on, and this is one of my more favorite books.